If matrix A is symmetric and real, all the entries of matrix A are real numbers and it is symmetric, then eigenvalues are also real. What is this happening? Okay, you write down if uh, if capital A is a real and symmetric matrix, then eigenvalues are also real. That is what you try to prove. Meanwhile, I will stop and start Microsoft whiteboard. Okay, now a conjugate of matrix we have written the definition in the first place if if you end up having some complex entries in your matrix you should take its complex conjugate in those in, in those entries and then the matrix is called conjugate matrix and the same will be the story for the vector suppose the entries of the vector x have some complex number in them then you should consider conjugate of those complex numbers for conjugate matrix. Okay, so because we are supposed to prove that eigenvalues are going to be real for symmetric real matrix A, we might require to take conjugate. So we start the proof as follows. We have been given matrix A, we consider vector eigenvector X, which is equal to lambda times X. This is the basic equation that we know. If we take conjugate of both sides, LHS and RHS, we have seen it in complex numbers that in polynomials, if we take complex of LHS and RHS, still it holds. So, uh, I mean, this is a matrix equation and we take conjugate of both sides, we, get, we take conjugate of A, we take conjugate of X, which is equal to lambda conjugate and x conjugate. Now we really do not know whether this x is a real number or not. Eventually we are supposed to prove that lambda is equal to lambda bar and hence the lambda values are real numbers. So that is what is the eventually what we are going to prove. So now uh, what is this is this is already known to us and what is given it, it is given that a is symmetric and real. So A is symmetric, that means A is equal to A transpose and A is real matrix, therefore we also know that A is equal to A conjugate because all the entries of A matrix are real. So I mean from here you should play with these two equations, these two equations and eventually arrive at lambda is equal to lambda bar. I give you a couple of minutes to do that. You are supposed to play with it. That means you are supposed to take some algebra, take some transpose, apply it to multiplication, uh, make two things equal, etc. and show that lambda is equal to lambda bar. Now let me demonstrate you how to go about it. Now if we have this equation with us transpose, I can always replace this A conjugate by A using this property. So this implies A x bar is equal to lambda bar. Now uh, 
Before going, let me just explain you what do we mean by lambda bar and what do we mean by x transpose. Okay, so you have got a vector whose entries can be real, can be complex. So let me put some entries: a one plus b one i, a two plus b two i, a three plus b three i. A four plus B four I. Okay, suppose this is our vector A, right? So X transpose. Let us first find out what do we mean by X transpose. X transpose is convert rows into columns or columns into rows. So X transpose vector will look like A one plus B one I, A two plus B two I. A three plus B three I and A four plus B four I. Correct. So this is X transpose. And what is X bar? X bar is take conjugates. A one minus B one I. A two minus B two I. A three minus B three I, A four minus B four I. This is X conjugate. Okay. Now, see if you have your vector X, which is completely real, that means all these B one, B two, B three, B fours are zeros. It is purely complex. That means A one, A two, A three, A four are zero. And X trans. So, can you tell me what what is our vector meaning? Of x transpose into x. What is the vector meaning of x transpose into x? It is a dot product of two vectors. X transpose and x is dot product of x and x, basically. Dot product of x. With itself, that is x transpose x transpose x dot product, and you can very well observe that that x transpose multiplied by x is going to be a square minus b a square a one square plus b one square a two square plus b two square. All those entries are going to be basically x transpose in our case has got dimension one by four multiplied by x. Which has got dimension four by one, and hence you will generate a matrix which is one by one. Do you understand? And it will be a one square plus b one square plus a two square plus b two square dot 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 plus a four square plus b four square. This is going to be your one by one matrix when you multiply. X transpose by X, and definitely you can say that X transpose multiplied by X are for that. It me. What is that? Not this. X transpose multiplied by X bar. A one minus B one I. A two minus B two I. A three minus B three I. A four minus B four I. Okay, so x transpose into x bar is definitely not equal to zero. That is what we will require in this proof. However, I was just trying to explain you what is multiplication of the mat the vector and its transpose. Transpose pre multiplied by transpose multiplied by vector is equivalent to dot product because uh, I hope you have understood three five seven. When we write vector like this, three five seven. We mean three i plus five j plus seven k, and if we write suppose this is vector x, and if we write x transpose, it will be three five seven again. And when we multiply these two, we rows into columns. So three into three, which is equal to nine plus twenty five plus forty nine, is going to be your one by one vector, which is a real number, and it is as good as you take. 
a dot product of this with this. Okay. Okay. So with this background, let me complete this proof. A bar is equal to uh, a times x bar is equal to lambda bar into x bar. Then we pre-multiply by this is equal to x transpose a x bar, which is equal to now lambda bar is a real number. There, I mean lambda bar is a scalar. Complex or real, we don't know, but it is a scalar. Therefore, lambda bar x transpose x bar. That is the first expression that we get. Huh. So now I need some space. I will. Now we will derive similar equation starting from ax is equal to lambda x. Now ax is equal to lambda x multiplying by x bar transpose to both sides we get ax x bar transpose ax is equal to lambda x bar transpose x. Okay. Now we take transpose of both sides. So transpose of this and transpose of this, which will be a reversal. Therefore, x transpose a transpose x bar transpose transpose that means x bar is equal to lambda is a scalar so lambda comes out just like that x bar transpose transpose will be the second place and x transpose x bar okay that is what is the equation that we got now. And now if we compare this equation with this equation, we already know A is equal to A transpose because the matrix A is symmetric. This implies maybe we can call this equation 1, we can call this equation 2, 1 and 2 imply uh, lambda bar x transpose sorry lambda bar x transpose x bar that is from 1 is going to be equal to lambda x transpose x bar okay and just now that is the reason why I have proved that x transpose x bar is always going to be non-zero as x transpose x bar is not equal to zero we get lambda is equal to lambda bar and hence lambda is real this is first half of the proof if you have a real symmetric matrix then your eigenvalues are bound to be real and second thing that we are supposed to prove is that again vectors are going to be orthogonal <clears throat> also eigen vectors are orthogonal Here we will have two cases. I mean, uh, if all lambda values are distinct, then you will very easily get all the eigenvectors from the given matrix A. And you will be able to see that all of them are orthogonal. Okay. And but, okay. So if all eigenvalues are distinct I 
आइगेन वेक्टर्स विल बी डिस्टिंक्ट corresponding to eigen values okay however if you have repeat eigen values still you can find out two distinct eigen vectors so that also we will see rather we will see example where the eigen uh, values are repeat but before that let us do this statement and then we will see what is the nature of eigen values and then we will see how do we get the orthogonal eigen vectors so what is given now here is a is a symmetric matrix is a symmetric matrix with uh, real entries therefore we know that eigen values are going to be real so that is what is given now so we end up getting say x is the first eigen vector we have our first lambda value then we have this equation and we also have equation suppose there is a second eigen vector for some second value of eigen value then we have these two equations with us and let us first prove that lambda 1 is not equal to lambda 2 if if lambda 1 is not equal to lambda 2 what you are supposed to prove is prove that x is perpendicular to y okay i give you some time because something similar to what we have done here see taking transpose taking conjugate taking inverse are the tools that you are supposed to use in matrices while solving the algebra of matrices uh okay so i wait for a couple of minutes and ask you to prove that x and y are perpendicular eigen vectors okay now somehow we are supposed to uh, get lambda 1 and lambda 2 together and we have to use these two equations therefore by multiplying see x and y are definitely non zero vector because they are eigen vectors okay and therefore multiplying first equation by y transpose we get lambda 1 y transpose x multiplying second equation by x transpose x transpose a y is equal to lambda 2 x transpose y okay now you will observe in rhs that first equation has got y transpose x and second equation has got x transpose y therefore we should take transpose of one of them so if i transpose the second then i will get y transpose a transpose x which is equal to lambda 2 y transpose x now here we will use the property of given matrix a is equal to a transpose that is what it is symmetric okay and therefore we can write it as y transpose a x is equal to lambda 2 y transpose x so now you can look at this equation 3 and 4 then lhs is exactly same and therefore 3 and 4 imply lambda 1 y transpose x uh is equal to lambda 2 y transpose x which means lambda 1 minus lambda 2 into y transpose x is equal to 0 now x vector is looking like this say x1 x2 x3 y vector also will look like that y1 y2 y3 okay 
and now if we say that lambda 1 and lambda 2 are two, two distinct eigen values two distinct eigen values then this is not equal to 0 and therefore y transpose x must be equal to 0 but y transpose is y1 y2 y3 multiplied by x1 x2 x3 it is as good as dot product of these two vectors and it is equal to 0 and therefore y is perpendicular to x okay now this is a special case when lambda 1 and lambda 2 are distinct but suppose if lambda 1 and lambda 2 are same coincident then I will show you with example then that then in that case if lambda 1 and lambda 2 are same that means we can choose two vectors which are orthogonal I mean because lambda 1 and lambda 2 will give you only one eigenvector because both the values are same repeat eigenvalue we will get the same vector but then uh, I mean that is where I will explain you what do we mean by null space and in the null space we will be able to produce one more eigenvector which is orthogonal to the given eigenvector that you have found out using that value of lambda and still this is going to be true. Okay, So you may write down this proof this is very simple I mean that is what I was mentioning that multiplying by y transpose multiplying by x transpose because x and y are non-zero vectors is doable. That gives us LHS, both places LHS same at equation 3 and equation 4. Therefore, RHS must be same. This is algebra of matrices. Okay. So, now I want you to find out numerical 3, 2, 4, 2, 0, 2, 4, 2, 3. This is our matrix A. It is real and symmetric. A, real and symmetric. So, by the first part of the above theorem, the lambda values must be real. And we will produce eigenvectors, three eigenvectors because this is 3 by 3. If lambda values are distinct for this matrix, we will automatically get three eigenvectors which are mutually perpendicular. But if lambda values repeat, then we will have to search for the third eigenvector which is perpendicular to both of them. Okay. So, find eigenvalues and eigenvectors of matrix A. Now, if you solve the quadratic equation in lambda, you will get lambda values, not quadratic, a cubic equation. Lambda 1 is equal to 8, lambda 2 is equal to minus 1, lambda 3 is equal to minus 1. So, repeat lambda values we have. So, it is a uh, defective case. So, repeat by lambda values. Okay. Now, what we are supposed to do here is subtract 8 from this. So it is minus 5, 2, 4, 2, minus 8, 2, 4, 2, minus 5. Okay. So this matrix is A minus lambda i. You should multiply this matrix with x to get your eigenvector x to get 0, 0, 0. That is the requirement. Okay. And now either you can reduce it or you can do trial and error here itself and look how can you uh, get it. Now here 5 into 2. So I mean with some experience you will realize that if I take the first column two times that makes it minus 10 and you want to create minus 10 out of this first two entries. So you take this one and this is two. I mean, because I know the eigenvector, I have guessed it right now. But if you can reduce this further, couple of zeros and then you will come to 
know what eigen vector you can get or you can solve x y z and you solve simultaneously and you get it i mean there are more than one methods we have learned to get the eigen vector and now if i write two times 2 is 4 minus 8 4 so second is also 0 8 2 10 and minus 10 that is also 0 so 2 1 2 is our eigen vector corresponding to 8 okay so for a lambda 1 is equal to 8 we get 2 1 2 similarly for minus 1 so 3 minus minus 1 that is 4 Two, four, two minus one, right? Zero minus minus one, so plus one. Two, four, two, three minus minus one, that is four. Now you can see this is a zero matrix. Uh, I mean, the determinant of this is zero, and you are supposed to take x, y, z such that you end up getting zero, zero, zero. That is going to be your Second eigen vector, uh, and it is quite visible that if you take this one, if you take this one, if you take this zero, and if you take this minus one, you will end up getting zero zero zero. Four minus four zero. So one zero minus one will give you this. Okay. Now let me explain you. Okay, let me explain you how to find out another eigen vector because the lambda three is also minus one. Now we have we have say this is vector a. Uh, can we cross check whether this is vector a, this is vector b? So we have got two eigen vectors with us. A looks like this. One zero minus one. B looks like this. Two one two. Okay. First of all, are these two orthogonal? Because that is what we have proved in earlier theorem. So it is ortho. Are they orthogonal? Are they perpendicular to each other? Can we take a dot b? That means a transpose into b. So two zero minus two zero. So a and b are perpendicular. That is the first important thing that we should notice. Okay. And now a and b are already orthogonal, and we are supposed to get one more vector here c. We we don't want a again. We want some other vector c here. Let me make it in blue. We want another vector c here, which we will call it as also eigen. In fact, there are many more than one eigen vectors which you can find out here in c. and they are going to be mutually perpendicular so we want c which is perpendicular to a find c perpendicular to a and perpendicular to b is it right and perpendicular to b or if you create any linear combination of a and b Uh, say alpha times a plus beta times b is going to be yet another new vector in this space and you should put additional condition that it should be perpendicular to a okay so can you get me i mean everybody can get in different vector c but check if you can get can you get me vector c which is perpendicular to both a and b by doing some linear this is vector problem you you know a you know b you want vector c such that it is perpendicular maybe if you take cross product of this you will get that or maybe you take a linear combination of a and b and make it perpendicular to a let me check whether i get it by cross product i j k 1 0 minus 1 2 1 2 This is equal. Ah, why that? Can you tell me? I into zero 
plus 1 that is i minus j into 2 minus 2 which is 0 plus k into 1 k into 1 minus 0 is 1 so 1 0 I mean, I plus k is yet another vector which I have got. Let me try one zero <coughs> one. Hmm. Will one zero one vector? Okay. Okay. Okay, there is a mistake of coefficient of j. It should have been minus four. Let us cross check whether the vector that we have got one minus four one is an eigen vector of matrix A or not. Three two four two zero two four two three multiplied by one minus four one. do do we get so this is 3 3 minus 8 3 minus 8 is minus 5 minus 8 is minus 5 plus 4 is minus 1 2 so 2 is plus 4 4 minus 8 That is minus same na four minus eight plus three is uh, minus one. That is this vector we got by multiplication, which is minus one times one minus four one. Okay, and I am not saying that these are the only two vectors which you can get out of this because we made both of them perpendicular to each other. any linear combination of 1 0 minus 1 and 1 minus 4 1 will also satisfy the requirement okay so we ended up getting three vectors a b and this is a new vector c and they are mutually perpendicular is b and c perpendicular minus 4 plus 2 plus 2 yes Are these two perpendicular? Yes, one minus one, zero. That is the story, and these are very important things that I am telling you because the applications that we are going to see will require this information. Any questions? Let me explain you what is the meaning of. Null space for this matrix now because lambda two and lambda three are same. After subtracting minus one from diagonal entries, the matrix that you have got, if you row reduce it, you will find will be only one pivot which is one. There will be some entries b one and b two over here, and then all the remaining six entries are going to be zero. this is the situation that we will have with this particular matrix because you can see either you can see columns or you can see rows that 2 1 2 this is 2 times 2 1 2 and this is also 2 2 times 2 1 2 so there is only one linearly independent vector remaining two vectors are multiples of that vector only and therefore you are supposed to get if you want to solve this simultaneous equations then you will get degree of freedom for two variables only one pivot rank only one pivot one and system is 3 by 3 okay and therefore the solution set solution set dimension is going to be two two dimensional solution set you will have because degree of freedom you have two over here correct and therefore if you happen to have one i get the vector which is falling in the solution set so what is null space null space is if there exists 
a solution for the system of simultaneous equations then null space dimension will tell you what is the dimension of solution set so basically if you get a matrix after row reduction something like this all three entries and you could make everything else 0 0 row reduction complete you have taken okay now here the rank of this matrix is also 3 and ranks of rank of the augmented matrix is also going to be 3 therefore we know that this has got a unique solution there is no degree of freedom for the solution so z is fixed y is fixed and x is also fixed so unique solution so dimension of solution say is 0 the matrix dimension is 3 rank of the matrix is 3 and therefore 3 minus 3 is 0 so solution set has got zero dimension however if you would have got this fellow zero here then you have a degree of freedom for choosing z and then in that case the rank of this matrix is going to be 2 so 3 minus 2 is equal to 1 so 1 is the dimension of solution set okay in other words there exists a solution and the dimension of solution set is one that means the null space of this system of simultaneous equations is one dimensional that is how it is said that is how it is said and now how do we get the dimension of the null space suppose you have been given three equations like 2 3 minus 1 by 1 2 4 6 minus 2 x y z is equal to some numbers 1 2 3 for example 1 2 3 then if you row reduce this you will find that there is no solution but if you make it 1 2 2 2 you will find that there exists a solution which is one dimensional and for that you need not have to worry about the rhs you completely equate this i mean instead of writing this vector over here you write this vector 0 0 0 that means you are trying to work out the solution exists or not near origin i mean considering origin you row reduce this matrix and find out the value of free variables how many pivots do you get you need really need not have to worry about rhs you consider them as 0 0 0 so 0 0 0 will not change the rank of augmented matrix ad d this is a and we consider a dot 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 d so the rank of this matrix will not be changed because of these entries 0 0 0 they will be same and therefore you will be able to find out what is the dimension of solution set for this system of linear equations okay and that is what is called null space now well, you can find out null space very quickly because rhs you are supposed to consider 0 0 0 and it is like shift of origin in our two dimensional space if you got if you got the solution when you have your origin is at 0 0 then you can convert that solution of the system in two dimension to the system wherever that origin is very quickly so if you know the null space that means what is the dimension of set that you have you will be able to find out the actual solution set by doing something like shift of origin in n dimensional space okay now these are the things which we are discussing are really in world deep linear algebra and don't expect any of 12 standard students to deal in this but these are the words which are used while talking linear algebra and therefore at least we need to know the meanings of those how you can use, how you can uh use this particular terms in case they happen to come across you in some problems to be able to deal with them that is the purpose so null space i don't think you will have null space word in your, any of your questions but null space it is the name given to 
the dimension of the solution set if it exists okay so for example in this particular in this particular matrix that we have got after subtracting lambda 2 is equal to minus 1 you will observe that there is only one vector and remaining two are proportional to them and therefore null space is two dimensional and hence if we get one particular vector which is our eigen vector by our regular calculations and because the null space is two dimensional we could get one more and any linear combination of this a and c also is going to be the eigen vector but then there is no point in finding out all possible eigen vectors they are infinitely many if we could get two it is good enough so the question what to do when the lambda values are same that is what i am trying to answer if the matrix is symmetric and all the entries are real then of course lambda values are going to be real and here here the multiplicity i mean algebraic multiplicity is two for minus 1 eigen value it is the same algebraically we say that okay both the values both the eigen values are same minus 1 minus 1. however geometrically we could find totally different looking new eigen vector which is also which is also i mean if we put it in front of our a we get it minus 1 times this completely new eigen vector so geometric multiplicity is still one You have three by three system. You have three by three system. It is a symmetric, like symmetric, uh, real matrix. Then geometrically, we are supposed to get three independent eigen vectors. That too, they are mutually perpendicular. That is what we have got. So here, the algebraic multiplicity is new word. Again, I am telling you, algebraic multiplicity. If you are just talking about only numbers and we are not connecting those numbers to geometry then the algebra is saying that oh i have i failed to give you third eigen value that is what algebra is saying but i can give you minus 1 two times that is what algebra is saying so algebraic multiplicity is two but geometric multiplicity we have three linearly independent vectors and all three of them are eigen vectors however two of them have got same eigen value which is equal to minus Okay, I think I am making the picture clear to you, and this is going to be helpful to you definitely. The matrix S. I mean, we we can do that actually. Yes, diagonal factorizing matrix A now. Let us see if we get the same result. Let us write down three, two, four, two, zero, two, four, two, three. okay is equal to eigen vector matrix say first 2 1 2 which is 8 1 0 1 which is uh, -1 and 1 4 1 this is our s this is our a we expect to have our lambda capital lambda 8 1 1 and if we can find out the inverse <coughs> inverse of this then this is going to work and these are the three orthogonal vectors orthogonal vectors so if two vectors are orthogonal then their inverse is transpose check can you find out the inverse of this find inverse of this and what we will do is we know that these three vectors are perpendicular to each other all three of them that means they are orthogonal and in, if you remember in the first lecture we have written the definition of orthogonal matrix matrix is orthogonal if a inverse is equal to a transpose so finding out inverse is really easy in case of orthogonal matrix now one more term orthonormal
it means every vector has got length equal to one one unit and they are perpendicular to each other so maybe let me write down s dash which is orthonormal matrix the length of the first vector is 9 so it is 2 upon root 9 1 upon 9 and 2 upon root 9 that is our first vector 2 upon root 9 1 upon root 9 2 upon root 9 now if you take dot product of this vector with itself you will get length of that vector equal to 1 okay and that is what is going to be our orthonormal now length of the second vector is 2 so 1 upon root 2 0 1 upon root 2 and the length of the second or third matrix is 16 17 18 so root 18 so 1 upon root 18 minus 4 upon root 18 1 upon root 18 now all these three vectors are mutually perpendicular and their dot products are going to be equal to 1 so this matrix is orthonormal matrix you need not have to worry about the determinant also I, I mean it is going to be 1 because all the all the vectors have length equal to 1 and then it is more easy to find out the inverse which is 8 minus 1 minus 1 that is our capital S so if it is an orthonormal vector then its inverse is just transpose 3 upon root 9 1 upon root 9 uh, sorry 2 upon root 9 1 upon root 9 2 upon root 9 1 upon root 2 0 1 upon root 2 1 upon root 18 minus 4 upon root 18 and 1 upon root 18 that is what is your inverse which anyway you have got okay so as far as eigenvector matrix is concerned you are not really worried about the length of the matrix length of each vector you are interested in the vector so the length of the first vector is root 9 second is root 2 third is root 18 so we are not considering any length of that vector because you can always stretch or compress depending upon what constant you are multiplying so this is what is the uh, case and therefore orthogonal matrices are very friendly because they are not their inverses can be computed very very quickly just transpose and you get the inverse i think the story gets completed here and orthonormal is also going to be useful to us we will solve one application tomorrow maybe i don't think that we will be able to complete today okay up to this point we are done so we have discussed since morning that if your matrix a with which you have started is has real entries and it's symmetric then its lambda values are going to be real and eigenvectors are going to be orthogonal to each other that is what we have proved so far now let me discuss the most important maybe application point of view not most important with respect to your exam that how do we change the base and why do we change the base of the system now let me explain you the importance of changing the base now so far whatever calculations we have done related to matrices taking numerical examples or taking general examples our basis say for example 3 by 3 matrix our basis we always considered x axis y axis and z axis and our basis had been i j and k j and k they are mutually perpendicular and unit vector so it is a nice base to consider i j k 
that means our base that without unknowingly what we have been using is 100 010 001 this is our first reference vector which we know is i this is j and this is k so this has been our reference and with respect to this reference we have been doing all the calculations now let me give you the application i mean one application why do we require to change the base okay now the window that you are seeing my window say if you are watching only my video right now my window then you will observe that it is a matrix it is a matrix say of this size i have kept it of this size on my screen right now and it has got many different let us say bulbs okay and it is a matrix there will be m rows and n columns in this window whatever window that you are watching and depending upon the signal that i give i move here i move here depending upon my position the some a i z entry of this matrix will decide whether to glow or remain off let us see that it is a black and white so black and white window either the led is glowing then it is white and it is off then it is black let us say so my picture is black and white right now suppose then there will be vectors the column vectors and total n column vectors will be there and this n for high resolution my camera is very expensive and therefore my resolution is very high and therefore my n value number of vectors that i am going to have is very very high pixel the pixel that we watch what we say is the density of those members of the matrix in a given rectangle or in a given square high resolution means the dimension of the matrix which you are talking in that particular display is more let us say my resolution i mean my m my m is say 500 m is equal to 500 and n is equal to 1000 there are 1000 columns over here okay and now like i j k like i j k see m is 500 so i don't want to write down 500 500 you need vectors i don't want to write but i can show you in 5 suppose the the rectangular matrix is of 5 by 6 okay then the first vector let us call that first unit vector will look like this 1 0 0 0 five entries first entry is 1 it will look like another another unit vector which is standard base this is corresponding to i in 3 by 3 i what will be j in 5 by 6 0 1 0 0 what will be 3 0 0 1 0 what will be 4 uh 0 0 0 1 and what will be 5 p5 which will be 0 this is let us say this is square matrix 5 by 5 Zero 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 zero. So this is a square matrix five by five, which has got five rows and five columns, five columns, and all of them are mutually perpendicular. All these even e two, e three, e four, e five are mutually perpendicular. Why? Because if you take dot product of even any two, it is zero. Even any three, it is zero. But then this is a standard base. This is standard. okay and now if we use the standard base of course we can do all algebraic calculations using standard base but then with respect to this standard base suppose my screen is not 500 by 100 it is 5 by 5 only okay then even me when i am teaching only this much part of my screen is moving suppose this much part rest 
वाइट बोर्ड इज कॉन्स्टेंट विंडो इज कॉन्स्टेंट एवरीथिंग इज सेम देर वॉट इज मुविंग इज ओनली दिस मच ओनली दिस मच बट देन सपोज फॉर टाइम टी वन टी इज इक्वल टू टी वन आई एम ऑक्युपाइंग दिस पोजिशन सपोज ट्राइंग टू प्रीच दिस इज माई पोजिशन एट टी वन एंड इन द नेक्स्ट मूवमेंट आई जस्ट चेंज माई हैंड हियर ओके सो वेन टी वन टी इज इक्वल टू टी वन आई हॉट वन पोजिशन and t is equal to d2 i have got another position now if the base when t is equal to t1 is standard then all these pixels whatever are there here would do the calculations related to this matrix and either they will glow or they will not glow and depending upon t1 at the time t1 the picture will be visible to you okay and that visibility is with respect to base e1 e2 e3 e4 e5 now at t2 i move little bit i don't move completely i just raise my hand then what will happen is at t2 again the all the pixels will be recalculated and majority of them maybe all these guys after calculating it again will continue to possess the same value as that of at t t1 but relations are required to be done all over again because you do not know what has changed what has not changed so from from t1 to t2 when you are coming from t1 to t2 you go back to base do the calculations and find out which are which have changed for all practical purposes you are finding out value of all pixels and then reporting it over here and putting it in front of you do you understand the mechanism so every time you calculate the new value of the new entry you are required to do calculations it will consume time it will consume energy therefore the research is going on where what they are trying to do is you have i have got this position now t1 and now i am changing only this much so if i make t1 whatever is the dimension or whatever are the values of this matrix at the time of t1 if that is made as a new base then only few entries over here are required to be changed because of t1 to t2 and not that all the calculation need to be done again understand what i am saying and for all practical purposes i am moving every microsecond so all those calculations are being done every microsecond and hence earlier when these things were not developed earlier we used to get even if i am moving very fast you used to see i am moving it very slow there is a slow motion or there was a freeze of frames the calculations were very slow and therefore you could not really watch the video continuous that was the problem few years before people are working hard in this area the and the linear algebra is playing very very important role these days where change of base because they have suppose you have got a very good system very good base system and then minimum number of calculations are required to be done form change for the frame 1 to frame 2 then it is going to be efficient system that those calculations will happen very fast the data required for doing those calculations will be very less and lot of efficiency so one of the standard bases or one of the most efficient bases that people choose in a given matrix is eigen vectors because eigen vectors are the vectors for a given matrix won't change they will remain constant but still now some additional research is being put in this now and people are coming out with new base system where the calculations are very efficient the data requirements are very less and that, that data compression is the field where lot of research is going on maybe in last 8 10 years the things which have happened because of whatsapp we can send the pictures we can send the uh, video clips 
which was not possible earlier. I mean, sending video clip was impossible from one place to the other digitally. But because of these efficient data compression techniques, they have got these things in place and things are working now. Okay. So change of base, it is exactly equivalent to shift of origin. We have seen lot of advantages of shift of origin earlier in our life. Two-dimensional geometry, if there is a pair of pair of lines and if we shift our origin to the point of intersection, then suddenly it becomes homogeneous equation in two variables. X, Y term disappears. X and Y, those terms also disappear of the homogeneous equation. So like that, if we know orthocenter and centroid, or if we know centroid, and circumcenter, we can find out orthocenter by shifting the origin. Those applications in two-dimensional geometry we have already seen. And there is a distinct advantage of shift of origin. Like in the two-dimensional geometry, the shift of origin in matrices is change of base. So if I am using the standard base system, my calculations are going to be very long and very uh, consuming a lot of data, very inefficient. If I learn how to change the base, then my systems are going to be efficient. Okay, so that is what is the background why one should have change of base knowledge in matrices. Now, what do I mean by change of base? <clears throat> I have domain, suppose we have domain two dimensional and co domain two dimensional. In, in the my system, I'm considering I as my first basis and J as my second basis. And I am finding out some images. I goes here and J goes here, something like that we have learned using transformation A. Okay, but I am not happy with I and J as a base. And I decide that in my domain, I am going to use base, which is not perpendicular. I, my base system is going to be something like this, suppose, something like this. This is going to be convenient for me. And then these are, this is my grid. Sorry. And this is my another axis. They need not have to be uh, at the same. I mean, this need not be rhombus, they could be parallel or rhombus also. Okay. So if I, in, here, in the first place, my grid is like graph paper. My grid is like graph paper, unit squares. This is y axis, this is x axis. Okay. And I am doing some transformation A from here to here. And we will consider an example where our codomain also has got same, but you can have different base system in codomain. But for our understanding to get less confused, let us have the same base system in our codomain. Oblique. One of them is x axis, one of them is y axis. And we want the same transformation to take place. That means, suppose, suppose I have a vector, vector x in the domain which turns out to be x dash in codomain under transformation a but i don't want to use ijk i will be efficient with this then the same vector i over here in this system of course should produce the same ida x dash over here but then this matrix is going to change because if, I mean, A is not going to be the same here. A works on I, J and K or maybe I and J and it gives me this transformation. So A is not going to be working over here. We will have to find out which matrix over here if we use. Then the same transformation will take place. That is what is change of base. Okay, any questions?
okay now i will complete the writing of the proof first and then maybe we can explain it to you again and i will take a numerical example and also show it to you okay let me keep it simple as far as writing is concerned so that i will write it only for two vectors and it can be expanded for n vectors so let rn be the dimension of vector space what does this mean my domain is n dimensional n dimensional means there are n linearly independent unit vectors n dimensional domain it spans n dimensional space but then let v1 v2 v3 dot 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 vn and v1 star v2 star v3 star dot 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 vn star b any two bases for rn okay now what does this mean v1 v2 belong to which particular picture that we have drawn that is ijk picture v1 v2 v3 what is v1 star v2 star picture let me show you v1 v2 v3 are standard vectors in this place this place v1 star v2 star v3 star are the standard vectors in this particular place okay that is the meaning both of them have dimensions n by n so let me write down in general then we will take example of 2 by 2 okay so any vector every vector v every vector v in rn has unique representation so if i am using this system then the vector v will look like x1 v1 plus x2 v2 plus dot 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 plus xn vn right and if i am using the second system change i want to change the base this is a second change second system which i want to use eventually then the same vector will look like i mean the linear combination also will be different and the vectors also will be di different vectors will be from this base x2 star v2 star plus dot 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 plus xn star vn star correct <clears throat> so in other words vector v which is vector v let x be the vector which looks like x1 x2 x3 dot 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 xn it is a i mean when we multiplied matrix by x y z we said x y z these are the proportions of linear combination of vector v1 v2 and v3 x times v1 y times v2 z times v3 like that only this is x1 times v1 x2 times v2 x3 times so this way i am writing this is our x vector and instead of x y z i am writing it as x1 x2 x3 so same and this is going to be like this and let x star look like x1 star x2 star 
dot 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 xn okay okay now suppose okay this is in general now let us not get confused with n so let me write down exactly similar thing for only to let vector v is equal to x1 v1 plus x2 v2 okay which is equal to x1 star v1 star plus x2 star v2 star okay so let v1 star be equal to p11 v1 plus p21 v2 and let v2 star is equal to p12 v1 plus p22 v2 now this is important what do we mean by this we mean let me show you in the bow diagram i am basically deciding the relationship between these two i am deciding the relationships between these two the unit vector here is i and this is j the unit vector here will be say this is what e1 and this is e2 so how are they related to each other how i j from the first system and e1 e2 from the second system how are they related to each other that is what i am trying to find out first because that knowledge is very important to me for doing the change of base and i got those coefficients suppose i want to express the new new first vector from the second base then it is p11 times first base first vector plus p21 times second and v2 okay so this is important step this is the matrix which basically these p11 12121 and 22 entries are going to be the transformation matrix between base 1 and base 2 so we have written that and therefore i can write x1 is equal to p11 x1 now how do you how do you get that now let us understand it okay now v1 star i can put it over here so x1 v1 plus x2 v2 is equal to x1 star into x1 star into p11 v1 plus p21 v2 that is my v1 star plus x2 star into p12 v1 plus p22 v2 correct and now i need to know what is x1 so i should collect all coefficients of v1 so it is x1 star p11 plus p12 x2 star times v1 plus p21 x1 star plus p22 x2 star times v2 okay and therefore x1 is equal to p11 x1 star plus p12 x2 star and x2 is equal to p21 x1 star plus p22 x2 star because this v1 comparing coefficients v2 v2 okay 
but then what is x1 and x2 it was our vector x so vertical x1 comma x2 which is our vector x which happens to be uh, the rhs if you write one below the other rhs then we have a matrix equation p11 p12 p21 p22 times x1 star x2 star understand this we have taken one base system found out the corresponding coefficients in which these vectors are to be added to create v we have taken another base system found out the coefficients in through in which we should add vector new vectors v1 star and then we found out what is the relationship between v1 star and v and v2 v2 star and v and v2 we wrote down those coefficients p11 p12 p21 and p22 correspondingly and we got this equation with us instead of writing it as a matrix equation what we can write in short is this was our x x1 x2 which is p times x star this is the work that we have done for domain domain of system 1 and domain of system 2 how they are related to each other vector x in the domain 1 is equal to matrix p times vector x star in the domain 2 okay now exactly similar work need to be done for domain suppose so i will make it short and what i will replace here is we will replace v by w replace v by w v star by w star and in fact you can have a separate transformation between two codomains also so maybe we will and then our uh, image in codomain of first system image in codomain of first system is y image in codomain of second system is y star and the transformation from system 1 to system 2 is q then what we will have equation like this we will have y is equal to q times y star exactly same exactly same okay now as a special case maybe because that will give us the idea about if domain is changed from system 1 to system 2 codomain is changed from system 1 to system 2 and the transformation matrices of those two p equals q suppose then y is also going to be equal to p times y star is that correct y is also going to be p times y star now this is our setup now our setup is ready now what is happening let me draw those pictures again this is my first domain domain 1 this is codomain 1 ठीक है दिस इज डोमेन टू दिस इज कोडोमेन टू एंड द ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन फ्रॉम डोमेन वन टू डोमेन डोमेन वन टू कोडोमेन वन इज डिफाइन बाय मैट्रिक्स ए नाउ हाउ दीज टू गाइज आर रिलेटेड टू इच अदर दे आर रिलेटेड बाय मैट्रिक्स पी 
how these two guys are related to each other q matrix q but we said q is equal to p as a special case and now therefore what we are supposed to find out is how d2 is related to c2 what should go and sit here okay that is what is our requirement so what we are doing now is we have got in our old system old system our image was y which was transformation a of vector x this was our this was the thing which is happening here and the transformation matrix is a but we said y is equal to p y star which is equal to a times p x star right and therefore my pre multiplying both of them by p inverse we get p inverse ap times x star however lhs becomes y star and the transformation matrix that you end up getting is p inverse a p times x star so if you are changing base from d1 to d2 in domain and c1 to c2 in codomain then all the vectors which would have transformed from y2 as a x to y under a with d1 and c1 will transform from d2 to c2 with this transformation so a becomes p inverse a p that is the transformation that you need to perform what is matrix p matrix p is the matrix which gives you connection of d1 and d2 x is equal to p x dash x star this is the matrix p so you find out p inverse you already know a you already know p then the product of these three is going to be your transformation matrix that is what is our change of base i will reduce the size if p is not equal to q then y is equal to ax q times y star is equal to a p times x star and therefore y star is equal to q inverse a p x star this is going to be the transformation matrix that is the only change okay now let a b Four six five one. Let V one be one three V two four two. V one star six eight V two star eleven thirty. Okay, find P. That is the first task. So you have vector A. You will get vector P. then suppose i ask you to find out what happens to vector 2 comma 5 
what happens to vector 2 comma 5 hmm. that is what is a vector given to you first of all find p you will start finding p p you will get as 2 1 3 2 so now if this is p and if i am giving any vector x in the first domain 2 comma 5 for a what will be its image in codomain that is y because of p what is going to be x star? what is going to be y star so if you know x star and y star then you should get y star this is one way of finding you just find out x star and y star by the standard method and then check whether y star is p inverse a p times x star or not that is what cross check we are trying 